Okay, the biblical truth of our hymn. Today, O Little Town of Bethlehem. American Episcopal clergyman, renowned as a preacher, he died unmarried in 1893. After episcopate of 15 months, his death was a major event in the history of Boston. One observe reported that they buried him like a king. Uh huh. Harvard students carried his body on their shoulders. All barriers of denomination well were down. All barriers of denominations were down. Roman Catholics and Unitarians felt that a great man had fallen in Israel. Germany, for instance, he referred to thrilling music and thrilling in respect to the liturgy that he attended there in the Roman Catholic Cathedral. Holy Week in Rome also greatly moved him. Is he Episcopal or is he a Roman Catholic? Especially the Papal High Mass on Easter. We got a guy who is intertwining into two religions here. Episcopal and Roman Catholic. What a great start for him, for what they call a carol. Although he despaired the Anglo-Catholic ritualism, he championed many aspects of the, of the movement, including congregational singing at the liturgy. He was inspired by visiting the village of Bethlehem in, of Jerusalem in 1865. Three years later, he wrote the poem for his church and his organist, Louis Redner, which added the music. But I was aroused from sleep late in the night, hearing an angel's strain whispering in my ear. Really? Chapter and verse. And season a piece of music paper. I jotted down the, the tremble of this tune as we now have it. And on Sunday morning before going to church, I filled in the harmony. That was Reiner. So an angel spoke to him about writing the music for this hymn. This hymn has been done by Elvis Presley, 1957, Elvis Christmas album. Really? You haven't read the story about his life according to his bodyguards. Jim Reeves, 1963, 12 Songs of Christmas. Barbara Streisand, 1967, A Christmas Album. Johnny Cash, 1980, Christ Classical Christmas. The Carpenters, 1984, An Old Fashioned Christmas. Hey, ready for this one? Dolly Parton, 1990, Home for Christmas. Dolly Parton? Really? These are people, they think, that they, in their perverted, wasted lives of singing and acting and carrying on, that if they do something in the name of religion, an album, God will be well pleased, and how great they will be. Glenn Campbell, 1993, Home for the Holidays. Neil Diamond, 1994, The Christmas Album, Volume 2. Bob Dylan, 2009, Christmas in the Heart. And Myra Carey, whoever she is, 2010, Merry Christmas to you. Already! You know that Stalin is going to say something, that Christmas is not a Bible. Everybody, including Christmas, let's put Christ back in Christmas. It was never there from the beginning. There is no Bible doctrine, there is nowhere in the Bible, book, chapter, and verse number, that Christ was born on Christmas. It's a pagan holiday. It's Mary, Christ, Mass. How's that? It's Roman Catholic as the source of this hymn and the people who are involved in it are Roman Catholic origin. So, here we go. Oh, little town of Bethlehem. And this is what this whole hymn is about with, 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 a, with a, a, another file. It's about Jesus Christ. Why not, oh, Jesus Christ, my Lord, God, and Savior? But, let's go on. It's about Bethlehem. Well, we'll see it. How still we see the lie. The city or the baby? Uh, 
Above the deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Alright, well, maybe it was cloudy, but the stars are through there. Yet in thy dark streets, see, in thy dark streets, so how still we see thee lie. That's not the baby in the manger we're talking about dark streets. It's about the city. Above the deep and deepless sleep, it's not the baby. Because the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark streets, Jesus Christ don't have no dark streets. So already the, we're on a city, not the Savior. Shineth the everlasting light. That's Jesus Christ. Got, got an L, capital L. John chapter 1. Give him credit. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Met in thee. Not the baby. The city. Again. For Christ is born of Mary. True. And gathered all above. All above what? While mortals sleep. I assume it's night time. The angels kept their watch. Of wandering love. And the thing is, I got to get my Bible. <laughs> oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't, don't get your Bible. Man, leave it alone. No, let's get the Bible. So let's go to Luke. All the angels are keeping watch. Uh, it's time now, I guess. I don't know. All right, Luke chapter 2, verse 11. Not verse 10. And the angel said unto them, A angel, the angel, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Gotta check something. What did it say? Hopes and fears of all the years were met in the. Uh, I thought it was on the name, but. Alright. And this shall be a sign, Jews require a sign, unto you. Ye shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel. A multitude of the heavenly host praising God. When that angel shows up, there's only one angel. Then all the angels. There were no angels keeping watch. They showed up after the angel was talking to the shepherds. For Christ is born to Mary, gathered all above. While mortals slept, the angels kept their watch of wandering love. O morning stars together. Proclaimed the holy birth. One star. One angel. Proclaimed to the shepherds. Not star. They showed up afterwards. Scripture. And praises. Sing. Oh. Sing. Glory to God. We don't know how to read. Luke 2.13. And suddenly so there was with the angel. A multitude of the heavenly host. Praising God and saying, saying is not singing. Singing is not saying, though they start with an S. And then we have one word has S A. The other word has S I. They are not singing. Already, throw old little town of Bethlehem out the window is not biblical correctly. What is this? The biblical truth of our hymns. This one's out the window. So. And praises. They say sing. The King James Bible says say. To God the King. And peace to all on earth. Oh, let's check that. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace. Goodwill toward men. You misquoted it. To all on earth? All? You mean those that will reject God's Son, who will not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that will think that Jesus is a wafer and you can eat and drink Him? And to follow what the Scriptures say, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, but rather to eat Jesus Christ? You mean those that will put Mary before 
Jesus. They will have peace. There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked, saith the Bible. Ezekiel. Woo -wee. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. Now, how do we know it was silent? We don't know nothing about the birth of Jesus. We have no idea if the animals were home or not. We know that he was in a manger. We know that fact is there are tons and tons and tons of people in Bethlehem and all over the cities of Judah. There's taxation. God had to use taxation to get everybody to their home place so baby Jesus can be born where he's supposed to be born according to the scriptures. Now this guy visited Bethlehem. But he never went to visit when Jesus... How do you know it was silent? That's like, oh, uh, silent night, holy night. How do you know? A woman's giving birth to, to a baby. I don't think it's quiet. When my son was born, a couple days before that, we were in the hospital, we were in the birthing room, the birthing area, the maternity room, and this woman found out did not want any medicine or anything like that. It was not a quiet night. So, what do you think? Do you think that God gave Mary some heavenly morphine? I doubt it. How silent, how silently the wondrous gift is given. And he's a wonderful gift. Not to be taken orally. According to the Episcopals who use liquor for their, their Jesus and their blood. They use the old fermented wine for the Catholic religion. They will, you know, this is hocus pocus, be five fold, pull a rabbit out of the hat. This is the body and blood of Jesus Christ, literally. That's not the gift. The gift is to believe by faith. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. Heaven. God imparts what? By what? what where, where's the doctrine here? The only way that I am pardoned anything is by the righteousness and by the holiness and by the merits in the gospel of Jesus Christ alone. Nothing I could have done. No ear may hear his coming. No ear may hear his coming. What's wrong, Mary? I'm having a baby now. He's coming. Much more louder than that. But in this world of sin, where meek soul will receive him, still the dear Christ enters in. That don't make no sense at all. Only the meek souls will receive him. How do you receive him? According to this man that is a biblical and it loves the Roman Catholic Mass and the Pope's ways and Easter service and all the way that you receive Christ by the means of the author of this hymn is to oh mm, that was good, Jesus. Have you ever read what you're supposed to do with the host if you throw it up? You intake their Jesus, another Jesus, into your mouth. You get sick and you throw up Jesus. Lord forbid. You got to put it on a, on a windowsill. You got to dry it out. And when you're better, you're to eat it back up. Now they change it. I've read that, you know, you, you dissolve it in holy water and junk like that. I don't even know where you get holy water. I see hot and cold. I don't see no faucet for holy. But there's another Jesus, there's another gospel, and there's another spirit. And when you look at the foundation of the little town of Bethlehem, when you receive Christ, of course, isn't this so great? No, these are people who stand in line and eat Jesus. You want to see that in the Bible? Don't open your Bible. Don't do it. Revelation 12. Oh, you're going to open up the Bible. He's going to ruin it for us. They open the hymnal. It's so great. Revelation 12. I'll show you the eating of a Jewish man. Revelation 12. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, 
and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. That's Israel. That's not Mary. That is a picture of the nation of Israel. Those 12 stars go all the way back to Genesis 37, 4, with Joseph's dream. But we're going to read on. And she being with child. So if she's Jewish, she is going to have a Jewish baby. I don't know who this child is, okay? I have no idea. But that's not the study. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. So it wasn't a silent night. For this woman or for Mary. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold a great red dragon. Having seven horns. Had seven heads and ten horns. And seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. And did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman. Which was ready to be delivered. For to deliver her child as soon as it was born. He wanted to devour that child. As soon as that child is born, he's ready to dine on that Jewish baby. Who is that? Verse 9. That great dragon was cast out, the old serpent, Genesis 3, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. How does he deceive the whole world? See this cookie? It's Jesus. Eat. Come and dine. Satan call it. Get in line. And stand in your little closet and tell me all your, your, your duties and your ditties and your sins and everything. I'll write them down. That is the source of this Philip Brooks who visited Bethlehem, who is an Episcopalian, who loves the doctrines and the ways of the Catholic Church. And that is the means to receive Christ. How silently, yeah. where children pure and happy pray to the blessed child. Where'd you get that? Where on earth did you find children came? Oh, look at the baby in the feeding trough. Oh, it's Jesus. Let's pray to him. That's as much as a nonsense as the knickknack where Santa Claus is bowing down before it's baby Jesus. It's nonsense. It's ridiculous. We don't know nothing about Jesus in his childhood except one thing. Eight days old, he was circumcised. Twelve years old, his family lost him in Jerusalem. They're on their way home. Hey, did you have Jesus? No, I didn't have Jesus. Who, who's got, where's Jesus? And they go all the way back and they find him in the temple. And then the next time we see him, he's 30 years old. What is this nonsense of making up doctrine, making up tradition? Hey, I got a tradition for you. Ready? Jesus is born. And the shepherds and three wise men show up at the same time. That's not scripture. Check your Bibles, Luke. Check your Bibles in Matthew. The shepherds showed up at a baby Jesus. And the wise men, who knows how many, at least two, Shows up when Jesus is about two or three years old. Tradition comes in the way of the Bible. And again, the Roman Catholic, I grew up Polish Roman Catholic. I grew up in a Roman Catholic church. I know these things. I grew up in a Polish family who were dedicated and honored to the Catholic church. Tradition overrides the Bible. And if the priest and the popish says, this is the way to be, and the Bible says this is not how it's to be, we override the Bible more than what God has to say. That's the teaching of the Catholic Church. We're children pure. You're going to have a hard time finding pure children. Happy pray to the blessed child. Where misery cries out to thee. I really don't understand this hymn. I don't. I, it's... Son of the Mother, capital M. Uh oh. Uh oh. Capital M. Capital M. Capital M. Capital M. Capital M. Capital M. Okay. Where is it? Capital M. I'm going to be able I tried to find this the other night. Uh, I mean, last time we did. 
Silent Night. Where is it? Where was one? Remember we did it. We did a hymn and it had a capital verse B for virgin. I tried to find it the other day and I can't find it. So, capital M and mother. Really? Have you read your Bible? Have you studied your Bible to be approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, but rightly divine the word of truth? Do you know what Jesus called Mary? Woman. Jesus, your mother's here. Who is my mother? Who's my brother? Who's my... But those that obey the will of God and obey the word of God. Woman, don't you know my time is not yet here? By putting a capital M on that mother, you have made the deity of Mary as a goddess. She, who teaches that for a religion? Shall I go back and read to you? Uh, he attended there in the Roman Catholic Cathedral. Holy Week in Rome also greatly moved him, especially the Papal High Mass on Easter. Although he despaired the Anglo-Catholic ritualism, he championed on the aspects of the movement, including congregation singing and literature. He, he was a fan of the Roman Catholic Church being Episcopalian. And so with that aspect, we now raise Mary up to a God. And Jesus said, woman. Called her woman. One woman came up to him one day and said, Blessed be the paps that thou hast sucked, Jesus. He said, Blessed be that do the word of God and, and keep it. Never mind my mother. You know, after John chapter... Don't go there. Don't go there. Don't do that. Don't go. I'll read you the last words of Mary. How's that? The last words of Mary. Ready? Well, first of all, look at this. Jesus said, oh, no, let's see. Verse 3, 2, 3, John 2, 3. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus, small m, said unto him, they have no wine. And Jesus said unto her, woman, now that's a capital W because it's the beginning of a sentence. You capitalize the first word when you're going to say something. Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. His mother, cap, no capital M. His mother says unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. That is the last words in the Bible recorded by Mary. Whatever my son says, do it. So when you put Mary as a goddess, you are going against what Mary said to do. Mother Mild. Where charity stands watching and faith holds wide the door. I right, this, this I shouldn't be doing this. It, it's the dark night wakes, the glory breaks, and Christmas comes once more. There's no Christ in Christmas. Christmas is not a Bible doctrine. All right, here we go. Open your Bibles. The King James Bible. We're going to go through all the verses where Christmas is. You ready? All right, that's all. We just did a complete, exhaustive list of where Christmas is in the Bible. Christ Mass. Put another S at the end of Christ Mass, and you got Christ Math, which is Catholic. Protestant churches. And if you put Christ back in Christmas, all you do is you got Christ, Matthew, you got the, the taking of the wafer, which is the body of Jesus Christ. Now, if you put Christ out of it, you got Mary's Mass. And all comes down when it comes biblically, you got one Mary's Mass and one Mary Christ Mass. In the eyes of God, you'll be stand before judgment, the great white throne. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. O holy child of Bethlehem. I don't ever see that in the scripture. 
Son of God, Son of Man, the only begotten Son of, the, of God. I've never seen child of Bethlehem, but we got to get back to worshiping. See, Bethlehem in this hymn has become a Mecca. It's that wandering pilgrimage of going to a place that we can see, touch, and feel, and buy souvenirs and sell souvenirs, that we can glorify God with goods and do to it. You already know I would not include this hymn. Most of the Christmas carols I wouldn't include. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. He already did if he was born. He left his father's throne to be born in Bethlehem. Why are you asking him to descend again? If he's there in the trough, in the manger, Lying there, wrapped up. He's already descended. You don't know your scriptures. I'm sorry, Philip Brooks, but you are too much into religion and not the Bible. Cast out our sin. And enter in. Bible. First Timothy, I mean First John, First John one nine. Cast out First John. 9. Let's see what the scripture says. If we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that's no man. That's the man Christ Jesus. That's God. And it goes on, my little children. Two one. These things write unto you that if you sin not, and if any man sin. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the appropriation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Why? What is this? 1 Timothy 2 5. For there is one God, one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. That's not taught in your Catholic Church. That's not taught in your Episcopal Church. That's not the source of a foundation of old little town of Bethlehem. Now it was prophesied Jesus would be born in Bethlehem. Yes, it's the city of David. Yeah, but what about Jesus? So my sin is not cast out. It's washed. It's cleansed. It's forgiven. Be born in us today. Wait a minute. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us. He's already descended from the throne. We pray, cast out our sins and enter in. Be born in us today. So you see, he's speaking about a baby that has not even been born yet. He is worshiping the city Bethlehem and not the one that was born in Bethlehem. Be born in us today? You would think that the old town of Bethlehem, the baby's already been born. Christ has already been born, but if it says be born, it hasn't been born yet. So we're singing about a city or a town before Jesus is born. We are worshiping and honoring a place. Shall we go to scriptures again? No, don't do that. Okay. John 4. John chapter 4. I believe it is. John chapter. John 4. John 4 verse 19. I am reading from a King James Bible. The woman said to him, Sir, talking to Jesus, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worship in this mountain, a place, and ye say that in Jerusalem, a place, is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus answered. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh. When ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what? 
We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews, not Gentiles. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. That woman said, hey, don't we worship here? Don't you worship there? Don't we worship in Bethlehem? Jesus says, one day, guess what? It's not going to be a place. There's not going to be a place. It's going to be a person. And that person is going to be the man Christ Jesus. Where was that? Oh, holy child, we pray. All right. Born unto this day. We hear the Christmas. That's not a Bible. Christmas angels. What the is a Christmas angel? There are no Christmas, Christmas angels. There are no Christmas in the Bible. Christmas is a pagan holiday, the birthday, the birth of Tammuz. And if he's got, if he's got angels, Revelation 12, the third of the angels have been cast out of heaven by Lucifer, by Satan, by that dragon, by the old serpent. Nowhere in the Bible is there Christmas, and there cannot be Christmas angels if there's no Christmas in the Bible. So this totally out the Bible. The great glad tidings. Glad tidings means good news. What's the good news? Jesus Christ suffered and died according to Scripture, and was buried, and arose again the third day according to the Scripture. That's the good news. The glad tidings tell. I dare you go up to any Roman Catholic and tell them, say, hey, what's a good tidings? I dare you to. Find somebody who comes up to you when you're in a witness, you're telling people about Jesus, they come up with the most snottiest attitude and anger. What's the gospel? What's the glad tidings? You'll be lucky to find eight and ten that will be able to tell you. Oh, come to us. Abide with us. Our Lord, Emmanuel. Emmanuel is not a Gentile word. It is for the Jewish people. And if you're saying you're Emmanuel... You are doing what religions have done, which God is against. And I will be, I will curse them that curse you to the Jewish people. If anybody curses you, I'm going to curse them back. And if you're stealing the Jewish Messiah, and you're trying to start your own kingdom, come, thy will won't be done. You stand at opposition of God the Father, whose people are Israel. That Emmanuel is for the Jewish people, not Christians. Find me, and I'm not one of them people, Paul only is them. I'm not one of them. But you find me where Paul says Emmanuel. You know where you got that? I'm going to look it up right now because I didn't do it earlier. I've got the resources here. Let's look up Emmanuel. Let's see where it is, okay? It would be interesting. Emmanuel. The only place it is in, the spelling according to it, is Matthew. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted, God is with us. That's to the nation of Israel. Matthew is a Jewish book. And I believe the only other place you See, I think it's an I. Check. Yeah. The other place is the other couple places. Let me read to you. Isaiah, the Gentile, says. No, I'm wrong. Isaiah is a Jew, written to Jewish people. Isaiah 7:14. Therefore, the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. Corinthians 1.11, Jews require a sign. 
Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Okay, Isaiah, the, the Jewish man, 8-8. Eight, eight. And he shall pass through Judah. Judah is Jewish. I know the Catholics are living over there now. I know the Catholics, you can pay them to go see the Holy the Holy Land experience. I know the Catholics will show you, this is not where Jesus died. This is not where Jesus was. This is not where Jesus was. They tell you Jesus would be there. But it's not. But pass through Judah. He shall overflow and go over. He shall reach even to the neck. And the stretching out of his wings shall fill the breath of thy land, O Emmanuel. Thy land is a piece of land given to one group of people and one group of people only. And that land has been, been fought over by the Arabians. That land has been fought over by the English. That land has been fought over by the Catholic Church. That land has been fought over by the Turks. That land is called the land of Israel. That Emmanuel belongs to Isaiah. That Emmanuel is brought to uh, the Jewish people. When we go to Matthew, Matthew 1, because that's the other place it's quoted. Matthew 1, let me bring it up. Let me show you something. Matthew 1. When you go running to Matthew, this is what you get. Ready? Matthew 1.1, 1, 1. the books of the generation of Jesus Christ. There we go. That's what we're talking about. The son of David, Jewish king. The son of Abraham, the Jewish founder. Abraham begat Isaac. No Ishmael. Isaac, a child of Abraham, a children of Israel. And Isaac begat Jacob. Jacob begat Judas of his brethren. And we go into the Jewish line of the kings. Matthew 1, 6, David the king, Jewish, Jewish, Jewish. And so when you come across and you say in a Gentile hymn of the Catholic Church or Episcopal Church or any Protestant or Baptist Church, Emmanuel, that is of a Jewish classification, the Messiah. Now, Jesus Christ is not my king, according to as some hymns will have it. He's the king of the Jews, never king of the church. I will tell you who Jesus is for a Gentile that is saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. He's the Lord Jesus Christ. He's Jesus Christ. He's Christ Jesus. He's my groom. I am his bride. He's the head of the church. He's the son of God. He's the only begotten son of God. He's my savior. He's my judge. He's the Almighty. But not ever for the church. I just read to you the three places it shows up. And it's not anything to Gentile. We've got to rightly divide. The Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be right, not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. And when you hold another Protestant Bible, or you hold a Catholic Bible, or you hold a Bible that's not the King James Bible, you've got a word of God that's been perverted by man as tradition and when jesus told his disciples he says beware of the leaven of the pharisees and sadducees he wasn't talking about bread of a loaf of bread he's talking about the doctrine and i will bring to the fact is of old little town of bethlehem it is tradition it is doctrine that does not follow the bible i would not ever include this if i ever had a church or if I ever became, which I won't, a song leader. Not with the roots of this hymn. Of Episcopal and Catholic. And the teaching. Now, we have a capital M for mother. Got a capital S for son. Okay, Christ. Alright, so let's look at something here real quick. And we'll be done. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above the deep and deepest sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy darkness shineth an everlasting light, capital L, that's good, that's fine. No one's going to open their Bible and see where that is in John chapter 1. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Alright, that's okay. 
Well, I'm going to show you. For Christ, that means anointed. You know an antichrist is coming, right? That's not key. But for Christ is born of Mary. All right. Mary. One, one little right here. One Mary. And gathered all above. While mortals sleep, the angels keep their watch of wandering love. Blah, blah, blah. The morning stars together proclaim the holy birth. And praises sing to God the King and peace to all on earth. All right. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is, a, is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. No ear may hear his coming, but in the world of sin, where meek souls will receive him, still the dear Christ enters in. Still got one Mary. Now I've hit on other hymns about this. Where children pure and happy pray to the blessed child. Where misery cries out to the son, capital S, of the mother, capital M, mild. Where charity stands watching and faith holds wide the door. The darkness wakes, the glory breaks, and Christmas comes once more. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels and great glad tidings tell. Last line. Of come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Now if you followed up on these lessons, what's missing? Where's the name Jesus? J-E-S-U-S. We have done a lot of hymns. And a lot of hymns, Jesus is missing. We're supposed to be singing about Jesus, and yet you do not find his name. Call me an old pill on this with this study, that I don't see the name of Jesus in many of these hymns. But in this one, what name do you see? Mary. Mary. No Jesus, but Mary. Now doesn't that put up the red flag? Mary is mentioned in J-E-S-U-S. -S. Now, the other hymns we did did not have a J-E-S-U-S, -S, but there was no M-A-R-Y. This one, Jesus is not mentioned by name. There is no other name given amongst men whereby ye must be saved. I keep quoting that verse. Acts 4.12. Why is it missing from the hymns why is Mary's name there? And why is it every point, as far as I can see, and I could be wrong, but when Jesus accompanies his mother, he never once calls her Mary. And one, other, I'm going to, one more place in the Bible, I know you don't want me to go to the Bible. John, it's the last few chapters. I think it's... Uh... All right, John 19, 26. Now here's the story. Christ is on the cross. He's in agony. He's in pain. He's going to die. He has suffered. He's been beaten. He's had his beard pulled. He has the thorns on his brow. He has had nails driven into him. He is just in agony. This would be the one of the few final words of Jesus. Ready. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother. Who is she? And his mother's sister. Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. And when Jesus therefore saw his mother, the disciples standing by whom he loved, he says unto his mother, Woman! This is going to be pretty much the last time that Jesus is going to speak to Mary publicly. And he addresses her as, Woman, behold thy son. And he said to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And there's never a conversation ever with Mary. Now she shows up in the book of Acts, but that's it. 
No one prays to her. No one gives her the time of day. Yet the whole little town of Bethlehem mentions Mary before it mentions Jesus. Warning. 